People without friends, why don't you have any friends? I experienced my first religious awakening when I finally beat the incel rumors. I grew up in an Amish community, which meant my family was extremely against mustaches and anything from the outside world. We grew our own crops, unalived our own cows and pigs, and we even made homemade toothpaste. I always knew I wanted to have something more in my life though, so when I was finally 18 years old, I begged my parents to let me go to a local college. They nearly kicked me out of the house at the sheer mention of college because they were scared my mind would become diluted with the evils of outside women. Eventually, I wore them down enough to let me go part-time. I spent the next few days entirely making over my entire look, including my long beard, and getting some t-shirts instead of formal attire so that people would talk to me. I even tried to catch up on pop culture by watching Star Wars because I heard some guys talk about it once so it must be a hot topic. I even scrubbed my teeth extra hard with my parents' toothpaste because they were extremely yellow, and I was afraid that some people wouldn't be okay with that. When I left for my first day, I had to sneak out in a cowboy hat so they wouldn't see my new haircut. I rode my bike to school, and when I got there, everything seemed so different. Everyone wore PJs to school, had these trendy backpacks and opposite genders were allowed to touch each other without chaperones. I felt like I was going to have an aneurysm from taking in too much all at once. I was convinced that I was wearing all of the wrong types of clothes and standing wrong. I even thought my smile was weird. But the minute I walked into my class, the people next to me started conversations with me so quickly. I thought I was in some type of movie because they were being so kind to me, but when I went to respond, they looked at me weirdly. One of them even pinched their nose and the other made a loud gagging sound. For the rest of the class, I heard them whispering to each other and laughing extremely hard while pointing at me. I was convinced that I said something wrong, but when someone else spoke to me, they did the same thing. I didn't even say anything more than just hi. It was like a constant cycle of someone coming up to me and complimenting my clothes or shoes, but then running away the minute I said something. When I got home, I considered not going back at all and giving in to my parents. But when I looked at my homework, I realized that I actually liked school, so I went back, even if I knew I didn't have any friends. Luckily, I was wrong because the minute I got back, a girl came up to me to be partners in our bio lab. She said she loved my shirt, but this time, she couldn't run away like everyone else because she was tied to me, professor's laws. Although she was stuck with me, she didn't seem to hate it, even though she usually kept five feet away from me. We would walk each other to classes, get lunch, and went to the library together that very night. It was like she couldn't get enough of me, all while staying a respectable distance from me, which I actually appreciated because I didn't want to violate my values either. Every day since then, we would constantly rant about our biology class together, talk about literally everything, and I couldn't handle one minute apart from her. It was like I found my first best friend in the world. But everything changed when midterm season rolled around. We were studying late into the night, daydreaming about what we could eat while looking at the mitochondria. She started talking about pasta and how badly she'd want some chicken alfredo, and I gave her a crazy look and told her she made that up. She literally paused so dramatically and asked if I really didn't know what that was. When I said yes, she actually left the room. I thought she was leaving like everyone else did when I said something stupid, but she came back in an hour with homemade chicken alfredo. I almost cried when she did this because it reminded me so much of the people at my home. I saw her in an entirely different light that night, and I had to hold myself back from kissing her right then and there. But like a respectful Amish man, I waited until we had to say goodnight. I took a dramatic pause in front of the exit door and asked if she would go to Wingstop with me, as a date. She laughed at me so hard but she said yes. I nearly sped home that night. On the day of the date, she stayed three feet away from me instead of five, and giggled at nearly everything I said. She even hyped up my Star Wars talk, which I recently learned wasn't a very cool thing to like. But at the end of the date, when I tried to kiss her she gagged. I felt like I had PTSD from my first day and asked her why she would do that. She sighed loudly and said she didn't want to smell it. When I asked what she was talking about, she told me she didn't want to tell me but my breath was absolutely terrible. She was afraid to smell it all the time, but she still liked me so she ignored the yellow teeth. She just couldn't handle the smell. I didn't flip out on her and just shut my mouth super tight and hugged her, thanking her for telling me the truth. Now I finally understood why everyone hated me. They couldn't handle my breath and yellow teeth, not my words, or maybe it's both I don't know. So I went home and googled on my tiny android any possible solution. I knew my parents used the same ingredients as Colgate, so I avoided main brands like the plague because clearly that wasn't working. After some hours on the internet, I found a study that said hydroxyapatite and xylitol were key ingredients in remineralizing and whitening teeth. The study explained that hydroxyapatite makes your enamel stronger because it makes your teeth suit up, and be able to fight against things that'll make cavities and holes in your teeth, while xylitol would help fight off tooth decay because bacteria in your mouth would try to eat it, but it dies due to the fact that bacteria can't digest xylitol. After learning that, I started searching for a toothpaste with hydroxyapatite and xylitol instead. I ended up buying this one called ORL toothpaste, and when it came, I brushed my teeth like three times and went to school with it. For once, my lab partner didn't cringe around me. I was nearly giggling when she stood one foot away from me this time. The next day was the same case, and this time she stood right next to me. For the next two weeks, she continued to get closer and closer to me. I even started noticing a subtle change in myself. When I smiled, I didn't see pure yellow covering my teeth. For the longest time, I was convinced that yellow was the natural color of teeth, but clearly I was wrong. I didn't feel like I was inhaling pure onion that my mom made with breakfast while keeping my mouth shut. I even went to class that morning and found my lab partner hugging me, without being scared too. When I asked her to go on another date that night, she happily said yes. We went to Applebee's for a two for 32 and by the end of it, we were kissing like Lady and the Tramp over a plate of pasta. It didn't just end there though, because people started to maintain conversations with me. They actually liked my outfits and Star Wars talk, 
And it wasn't just my awkward talking. I finally found a community outside my home, but I knew I couldn't leave my family in the dark. I snuck the toothpaste in our homemade jar and I noticed the smell of our house slowly smelling better. I had no idea it stank so much because of our mouths. And once the smell disappeared, my family started being nicer. They even let me bring home my lab partner. When they gave me their seal of approval, I knew I found chemistry and biology. Edit, for everyone asking, the toothpaste I bought was ORL toothpaste.